introducing a newly married couple, Jim, and Linda. They appear to be deeply in love with one another. Jim surprises his wife with a new home, which she absolutely loves, and promises to give her the best life she deserves. Fast forward to many years later, and we see that the couple now has two daughters, Megan and Bridget. Unfortunately, their marriage has become strained, and they are only staying together for the sake of their kids. One morning, Linda is awakened by her daughters, who ask when their father will return. She tells them that he went on an overnight business trip, and will be back in the evening. Linda then drops her daughters off at school, before carrying on with her daily chores at the house. In the afternoon, Linda gets a call from her friend, Annie, who says it's already Thursday, and that Annie is going on a date. Annie also wants to know what Linda has planned for the weekend. Moments later, Linda receives a voice message from her husband Jim. He is about to confess something to her, but is interrupted by another call, and hangs up. Hold on. Concerned, she tries calling him back, but there's no answer. After a while, she is visited by the local sheriff, Riley, who gives her the devastating news of her husband's death. Apparently, his car collided with a truck, resulting in an explosion. Hearing this, Linda is in disbelief, and the sheriff shockingly reveals that Jim actually died yesterday, so she mentions that she just heard his voice message. The accident was so brutal that even the truck driver couldn't make it, and the sheriff apologizes to her for not reaching her sooner. After he departs, a devastated Linda takes some time to process the information. A part of her knows that her husband has passed away, but the other part thinks he is still alive. Regardless, she goes to pick up her daughters, and tearfully informs them of their father's death. That evening, Linda's mother arrives at the house to comfort her. After putting the kids to bed, she says that they have to start looking into funeral arrangements and insurance claims, but Linda says that she's not ready for that yet. Once mom departs, Linda falls asleep on the couch, crying and holding onto her wedding picture, she remembers how happy they were that day. The next morning, Something very strange is going to happen, she wakes up in her bed, wearing different clothes. As she walks downstairs, she notices Jim's briefcase, and hears live commentary on TV, she slowly approaches it. But, to her surprise, she finds Jim alive and well, eating breakfast while watching a game on TV. Seeing her in distress, Jim asks if everything is fine, to which she says yes. This utterly shocks Linda and she struggles to comprehend what is happening. Jim then leaves for office as he gets late for Monday morning meeting, and she begins to wonder if Jim's death was just a terrible dream. Following this, Linda drives her daughters to school. As soon as she returns home, she anxiously checks the answering machine. To her relief, she finds no new messages, which further bolsters her theory that she had a bad nightmare. Linda then goes out for a ride to clear her mind, but she is lost in her thoughts, and almost collides with another car. At that moment, she is stopped by police, and Sheriff Riley shows up, but he doesn't even bring up their previous conversation, and advises her to be careful. In the next scene, Linda returns home and begins her daily chores. As she is drying clothes in the backyard, she steps on a toy, which causes her to fall. In the process, she accidentally touches a dead bird, which causes her hand to be stained with blood. Linda freaks out at the sight, and immediately goes inside to wash her hands. She then wears a pair of gloves, and disposes of the bird in the bin. That night, they all have dinner together, and later on, while Jim is asleep, Linda watches him intently, trying to make sense of the situation. The next morning, she wakes up to find him gone once again. Her clothes have changed, and she notices that all the mirrors are covered. There is also a wine bottle on her table. Confused, Linda goes to the bathroom, but the mystery continues to grow, she discovers lithium tablets on the sink with her name on it. When Linda goes downstairs, she finds her family and friends preparing for Jim's funeral. Panicked, she insists there must be a misunderstanding because Jim is still alive, but the people there assume that Linda may be acting crazy due to her grief. Linda then goes to the garden, and finds her daughters playing. Shockingly, she notices that Bridget's face is covered with scars, but doesn't remember how it happened. She desperately tries to inquire about it, but Megan tells Linda there are no cuts. She's perfect, like a beautiful princess. Later on, everyone heads to the church for Jim's funeral, where his body is brought into a coffin. 
Convinced that he's still alive, Linda demands to see the body, thinking they are making a mistake. The others, including her mom try to stop her, claiming that he is in a terrible state, but she persists. She forcefully tries to open the coffin herself, and in the process, Jim's mutilated head rolls out. Oh my God. Help! Help! I'm alive. In the next scene, everyone gathers around Jim's grave, and begins to pray. While they're at it, Linda notices a mysterious woman watching from a distance. So, she approaches her, and asks who she is, and how she knows her husband. The woman claims they just met yesterday and talked, but Linda doesn't recall this encounter. She presses her for more information, but the woman just apologizes to her, and drives away. Later, at home, Linda checks the lithium bottle, and discovers it was prescribed by someone named Dr. Roth. This confuses her, because she doesn't know anyone by that name. When she looks up his phone number in the phone book, the page is torn out. Just then, she notices the trash can, where she finds the missing page. Using the number, she immediately tries to contact Dr. Roth, but her call goes to voicemail. That evening, while Linda is with her daughters, an unknown man arrives at the house, accompanied by Sheriff Riley. He introduces himself as Dr. Roth, and asks if Linda remembers him. However, she says that she doesn't. The two men are here under the suspicion that she intentionally hurt Bridget. Linda is unable to recall how her daughter got those scars, but she swears that she would never hurt her. Despite her protests, a group of nurses grab her, and forcefully take her to the hospital. Afterwards, at the hospital, Linda overhears a conversation where Sheriff Riley informs Dr. Roth that Jim died on Wednesday, though they only informed Linda on Thursday. This confuses Dr. Roth as he recalls Linda visiting his office on Tuesday, she was worried that her husband was going to die. With this information, the two suspect that she might be involved in her husband's death. Therefore, they forcefully inject her with a sedative, and put her to sleep. The next morning, Linda wakes up to discover that she's back in her house. She suddenly hears a sound in the shower, and when she approaches the bathroom, she shockingly finds Jim there. He is nonchalantly taking a shower, oblivious to everything that is happening around. Linda becomes emotional seeing him, and hugs him tightly in the shower. When he asks what's wrong, she struggles to find the words to explain. She then goes downstairs, and discovers that Bridget has no scars, which makes her very happy. After dropping the girls off at school, Linda returns home. As she is about to get in, the backyard dustbin catches her attention. She slowly opens its lid, only to find that the dead bird is still there. Terrified, she quickly goes inside the bathroom to check for the lithium tablets, but fails to find them. Linda then goes through her phone book, and discovers that the page containing Dr. Roth's number is still intact. Regardless, she tears it, and keeps it with herself. In the next scene, Linda visits Dr. Roth at his clinic, and shares the strange events happening with her. She tells him about how her husband dies one day, and comes back the other. She doesn't even know if these events are real or not. Dr. Roth, who doesn't seem to recognize her, says that she is probably having some nightmares, and he also confirms that he didn't prescribe her any medications before this. He thinks that Linda is going through some inconsistencies, but she believes that it's supernatural. Nonetheless, he writes her some medicines, which turn out to be none other than lithium tablets. Following this, Linda arrives at Jim's office, and tries to explain what is happening. She suggests going somewhere else with the girls, but Jim says he has work to do. Their conversation is interrupted by Claire, the same woman Linda met at the funeral. She turns out to be Jim's assistant. After a short introduction, the two leave for an important meeting. Linda observes their interaction and chemistry, which makes her very sad. Upon returning home, Linda tries to take the lithium pills, but changes her mind, and discards the bottle into the sink. Later, when it starts raining, she asks her daughters to fetch the clothes that are hanging outside. In her haste, Bridget runs without paying attention, and collides with a glass window, which injures her. Somebody? Somebody please? Good Linda rushes her to the hospital, where Jim arrives shortly afterward. Fortunately, Bridget is okay, but her face is marked with scars. Linda hides all of the house's mirrors, and when Megan asks if the scars last forever, 
She says there are no scars. Bridget's perfect, just like a princess. Later that night, Jim is in a bad mood, and an argument ensues between the couple. He believes that she's not in a good mental state and can't take care of their kids. So, he has invited her mom to take care of the house. Later, a frustrated Linda discovers the torn paper with Dr. Roth's number in her pocket, and she impulsively throws it in the trash can. But as soon as she does so, she realizes that she has seen the future. She knows that all the events are connected, but the timeline is still confusing. Linda then takes a paper, and writes down the events of the week. She discovered Jim's death on Thursday, but he was alive on Monday. The funeral took place on Saturday, and it was the same day she was brought to the hospital. On Tuesday, she met Dr. Roth, and her daughter got injured. Reflecting on these events, Linda figures out that Jim died on Wednesday. She later approaches him, and requests that he postpone his upcoming trip. However, he vehemently refuses, saying he has waited for this day for too long and it'll be good for all of them. In the end, Linda asks him a favor, when it's Wednesday, he has to wake her up before leaving. The husband finds it strange but agrees. The next morning, Linda wakes up on the couch, clutching her wedding picture. She is startled to find her mom there, and realizes it's Friday, which means Jim is already dead. She takes out that paper, and comes across the name Claire, and she remembers meeting her at Jim's office and the funeral. After this, she heads to Claire's house, and says they need to talk about her husband. During their conversation, Claire finally confesses that she was having an affair with Jim, which devastates Linda. Following this, Linda goes to the bank locker and finds insurance papers. She then meets with the insurance agent, who reveals that their mortgage and children's education has been taken care of. The annuity left by Jim will be more than enough to sustain their livelihood. The agent also reveals that Jim met him on Wednesday morning before his trip, and was very anxious. He said he wanted to take care of the family, no matter what happened, and tripled his death benefits. Upon learning all this, Linda realizes that Jim actually loves the family. When Linda gets home, her mom asks about the funeral arrangements, but she calmly assures her that everything is taken care of, and the funeral is set for the next day. Her mom is surprised by her calm demeanor, and that she can handle everything this soon. Later that night, as she drinks wine in her bedroom, her mother comes to check on her. Linda asks her if allowing Jim to die is the same as killing him, and her confused mother replies that Jim is already gone, and there's no changing that now. The following morning, Linda awakens in different clothes, alongside Jim, and realizes that it's Sunday. She suggests that he spend some time with her daughters, to which he agrees. After Jim leaves with the children, Linda heads to the church, and confides in a priest about the weird experiences she's going through. The priest then tells stories of similar cases in which people had premonitions, but all ended up being fatal, and unable to change their fate. He warns people who have lost faith that they are vulnerable to having their lives taken over by some forces. It could be a miracle, but Linda doesn't feel that way. He tells her that she needs to have faith and fight for what is important in her life, but she doesn't know what to fight for. Following this, she drives to mile marker 220, Jim's accident site, to see what might have happened. As she looks around the surroundings, she becomes lost in her thoughts. She begins to envision all the events that have been unfolding as of late. Later that night, Linda watches Jim playing with their kids. All of a sudden, she asks if he loves them. Jim is startled by the question, but he says that he loves them more than anything. In turn, the kids then ask if he loves mom, Jim pauses for a while, and says he does. But by the looks on his face, it is clear that he is not that attracted to her anymore. Later, Linda is alone in the backyard and it starts to rain. When Jim arrives, she tells him that she misses the way they used to be. Jim tries to convince her by telling they are married, had kids and a house, and Linda says they're running out of time. Suddenly, the nearby electric line explodes, and a dead bird falls into their yard. Seeing this, the couple rushes inside. Linda then apologizes to Jim, and the couple ends up getting intimate. Later, as they lay together, Jim senses something on Linda's mind and asks what's wrong. She says she saw him die in a dream, but he assures her that it's just a dream and everything's gonna be fine. The following morning, Linda wakes up and realizes that it's Wednesday, the day Jim is supposed to die. She looks for him everywhere, 
and discovers a note saying that he will drop the kids off before leaving for his trip. Linda quickly gets into her car, and sets out to find him. Meanwhile, we see Jim meeting with the insurance agent, where he triples his death benefits. He does this because Linda's statement from last night has made him a bit anxious. Moments later, as Jim gets in his car, he receives a call from Claire, who awaits him in a hotel room. However, he feels guilty, and finally tells Claire that he can't be with her. After that, he calls his home landline, but when no one answers, he leaves a voicemail, saying he really loves Linda and the kids, which Linda heard at the beginning of the movie. Just then, he is interrupted when he receives a call from Linda's mobile, who tells him that she is aware of his affair. The husband finally tells her he wants to make things better between them, whatever it takes, and Linda is nearly in tears of joy to hear this. Linda informs Jim that she's right behind him, and he pulls over. But then, she gets scared when she realizes they're at the accident scene, so she urges him to turn around. While he is turning, he nearly gets hit by a car, and his car gets stalled in the middle of the road, but they relax as everything is fine. Just as Linda breathes a sigh of relief, she notices a truck approaching Jim at high speed. She then runs up to him, and asks him to get out of the car. Jim notices the truck and tries to unlock the car, but the door becomes jammed. And unfortunately, within seconds, both vehicles explode, and Linda has a breakdown, as she realizes that her husband's death is inevitable. She was in fact, the main reason behind it. The scene then shifts to several months later, as we see Linda being awakened by her daughters. They tell her that the moving truck has arrived, and it turns out that they're leaving the house. Before the film ends, Linda recalls the priest's advice to fight for what matters most. The movie concludes as she gets out of her bed, revealing that she is now pregnant.